Good morning, gamers, and welcome back to more Let's Play Xenoblade Chronicles. We're near the end of this adventure, so of course, now's the perfect time to work on the party's relationship. Okay, in all seriousness, we're here to talk about a couple of things related to completion. First of all, uh, you may have noticed that I've gotten 100% Collectopedia progression in every area of the game, as you might be able to see here. I think I also showed this off in a different recording session or whatever. Uh, but you may notice that there is actually an additional page uh, to the Collectopedia, the other page. Now, all of the items on the other page can only be traded for, not found, and all of them require at least three stars of affinity with their respective area, with the exception of the love source, which requires five. Some of these are also extremely valuable, some of them so much so that you need end game glyph items uh, from some of the higher level unique monsters just to get them. Having the two skills from Shulk and Ricky to reduce the value needed on an item that be Friends Now and Hero's Privilege uh, will help for all of these and is required for the Love Source, so be sure to get them. The trades are as follows. The Minute Mantis from Sonya in Colony 9. The Love Beetle from Lupa in Frontier Village. The Golden Cog from Alexi in Colony 6. The Angel Engine Y from Raxa in the Hidden Machina Village. The Thunder Compass from Jirak in the Aether Seas Aether Plant, or bleh, the Aerith Sea Aether Plant. The Coin of Fortune from Makrish in Colony 6, and the Love Source from Jarel in Colony 6. Completing the other Collectopedia gives you an AP up 5, EXP up 5, Critical up 5, and Aggro down 5 gem. As I said earlier, the Love Source gives overwhelmingly more affinity between party members than any other item. Uh, and as such, it's the best item to use for grinding out affinity. Uh, since the only farm for it is to farm the super bosses, uh, you might have your work cut out for you on that, especially since you're going to need quite a few of them in order to max out affinity between characters. Battle benefits aside, there is one pink rank heart to heart for every possible combination of characters, meaning that for a 100% run, you're going to need to grind out affinity with everyone for everyone. There are 63 total heart-to-hearts, and while there are none in missable areas, there are some in Alchemoth and Aerith Sea, meaning that waiting this long can be a bit challenging for accessing these areas. In the interest of showing the necessary information about each of them in a condensed format, I'll quickly show a brief little infographic for each one up on screen now. Now, that should cover just about every heart to heart in the game. Doing so, uh, doing all of them, uh, rewards you with an achievement, which is a poor way to segue into the last topic of this video, achievements. Now, I've talked about achievements uh, during the LP at least every now and again, but I never really went over the requirements for them. They're split into two categories, trials, which reset during a new game plus, and records, which are maintained between runs. Now, many of them you can get just from playing the game, and while some require specific actions, others, just plain and simple, need a grind to get. Uh, but on screen, you should see the requirements for each achievement in more specific detail. While a lot of these are well within one's means to achieve on a standard new game, quite a few of them, especially the records, will require either a lot of manipulation on the player's end or a second playthrough or more on a new game plus, which I'll go over in a following episode. So, following along with this LP, you now have the tools to do the following. Find every landmark and location, find every collectible, finish all of Colony 6, see every heart to heart, do every achievement, and complete every side quest possible. Assuming you're at least willing to do all of that, because 100% in this game takes forever. I'm not even close, and I'm like 160 some hours into it, and I probably won't be able to do so within a reasonable amount of time, which is kind of why I'm doing these bonus episodes before I've even finished with all of that, because uh, I kind of realized that, especially with Xenoblade 3 hot on my heels, I'm not going to have the time to do as much of this as I thought I would. Now, as far as things to discuss about this game, there's only one topic that I have 
well, one major topic that I have yet to share with uh, everyone here. That being New Game Plus, which I did touch upon a little bit in brief. Uh, we're also going to briefly go over every unique monster in the game, uh, because for some people you might actually just straight up need to go into a New Game Plus to catch the ones you might have missed in some of the missable areas. But yeah, next time we're focusing on New Game Plus on Let's Play Xenoblade Chronicles. See you guys then!